Cornell Wilde in When Cupid Was a Pup on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. But first, here is Gain Whitman. Have you been fooled by the uncertain weather of these spring days? Well, here is something you can do to help protect your family in April showers. You can make sure that rain wear, sports wear, and children's clothes you buy carry the Zealand tag. The tag that means your garment is treated with DuPont Zealand durable water repellent. Zealand is different from ordinary water repellents because its protection won't come out when your garments are washed or cleaned. Zealand is one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. <laughs> The DuPont Company presents When Cupid Was a Pup, starring Cornell Wilde as Dick Pearson on The Cavalcade of America. My name is Dick Pearson. When the war ended, like a lot of other fellows, I craved two things, peace and quiet. I guess everybody can understand that. What might take a little explaining was the fact that I decided to stay in the Coast Guard to get it. Well, after a little maneuvering, I found myself heading for a job at a lighthouse, 26 miles out from San Francisco, on the Farallon Islands. I figured a place like that would be a big and welcome change after the South Pacific business. Then, too, there was one other thing that made me want to take a job in a lighthouse. But, well, anyway, when I met Pop Larson that first day, it sounded like just what the doctor ordered. Well, here we are. How high is the lighthouse, Mr. Larson? 360 feet above water. Highest on the Pacific coast. Get used to it, though. As long as it doesn't rock, it's okay. Most powerful light on the coast. I had no idea it was so large. Uh-huh. Light's mechanically operated. Throw this here switch and you turn on the juice. The clock mechanism controls the flash. Light's on for two and seven-tenths seconds, off 17 and three-tenths. Well, why two and seven-tenths and seventeen three-tenths? What sets those times? Well, every house has its own time. Oh. The skipper of a ship knows. Or he can look up the flash and know he's seeing this light. Visibility's better, too. I see. Well, so far, Mr. Larson, it sounds good. <laughs> you might as well call me Pop, son. Everybody else does. Okay, Pop. Now, anything else you want to know? Well, what'll my job be? Mostly maintenance. And... Hiya, Pop. Oh, taking a look at the old girl? Yeah, Eddie. Oh, this here is Dick Pearson. Oh, sure. Gonna take my place, huh, Dick? I think so. At least it's a job with a view. <laughs> well, that it is. <laughs> lots of sky, lots of water, and plenty of ships. Take a look. Say, that's all right. And look at those seals down there on the rocks. Why, there must be hundreds of them. Thousands would be more like it. Every spring they come down here to the Farallons in the Arctic. A great herd of them. Stay for a while, and one day they disappear, just like they came. Back to the Arctic they go. Yeah, they're getting restless now. Due to shove off any day. You want to see that, Pearson? One minute they're sunning themselves on the rocks, and the next, like that, they're gone. You know, I think I'm going to like it out here. What'll my job be, Pop? Ed will break in, Dick. Then he's going to leave. Leave? I can't understand anyone wanting to get away from this peace and quiet. Oh, sometimes it's so quiet you got to talk to yourself to be sure you're still alive. That's exactly what I want. I won't get lonesome. It's quiet, and I like it quiet. Sure, but you'll get tired of it. A guy like you ought to go for bright lights and excitement and people. Well, that depends on what you mean by excitement. As for people, I'm a little tired of them. Sure. Well, I'll be seeing you down below. I think Eddie's right. Seems to me that a fellow just back from what you've been through would want to take himself some fun. San Francisco's only 26 miles away. You can get off, time off to run over, and have a date with a gal or something. No, thanks. I don't like cities, and I don't want any gals. Oh. Well, I was just trying... Can I help you understand? Well, there was a girl. She couldn't wait for the war to end. Is that good enough? Oh, one of those things, huh? Well, forget it, son. No business of mine. Ah, there they go. Shoving off, I guess. Listen, son, you run on down to the rocks and watch. It's a sight you don't want to miss. Okay, thanks. I'll see you later. Don't be late for supper. Bobby won't stand for it. Bobby, who's that? Cook's for us. Oh, don't worry. Tell him I'll be on time. What are you saying? I said you... Oh, never mind. I'll come down there. Can't hear a word you're saying. Seals are making too much noise. But well, don't get too close to the edge. Oh. 
Hey, what are you doing here? Oh, just watching the seals. You ever see them before? Yeah, but not like this. You stay here? Stay? Well, if I didn't, you'd starve to death. Didn't Pop tell you about me? No. He didn't say anything about a girl being out here. What's the matter with that? It would take too long to tell you. You're not very friendly, are you, Mr. Pearson? Being friendly isn't part of my job here. How would you know my name? Carl told me. He's the skipper of the boat that brought you out here. Oh, I see. I'm Bobby, Roberta Larson. But don't you dare call me Roberta. I cook. You like chowder? Not particularly. Scallops? Not at all. And you don't like girls? Look, we went over all that a minute ago. Let's skip it. All right, if you want it that way. And what's that? Oh, it sounded like a seal. This close in? Well, sometimes they come all the way into the cove. Say, that sounds awfully close. Well, it's coming from right below us. Well, I'll climb down and see what it is. All right, then. Oh, but hurry. The poor thing sounds as if it's in pain. Well, these rocks are slippery. Oh, hold tight. Uh, see anything? Well, I'll be doggone. Hey, look. Oh, oh it's a seal, a pup. I guess the herd left it behind. Yeah, I guess so. Gee, that poor little thing. Can't it swim? Oh, look. It's eyes. Yeah. Blind. They must have climbed it up here thinking it was going toward the herd. Well, what are you going to do with it? Gee, I don't know. Let me look at its eyes. No, I don't think it's really blind. There's just something wrong. I wonder... You wonder what? I'm going to take care of it and try to bring it around. Oh, but you don't know anything about seals, do you? I don't have to. I used to be a pharmacist, mate. There were a lot of men who... Well, I'm going to take him back to the lighthouse, see what I can do. He may not be much of a seal, but I want to give him a break. Oh, he doesn't like it. Maybe not, but boric acid ought to help his eyes. Now, hold still, baby. Well, what do you feed it? So, I don't know. A seal eats fish, doesn't it? Well, I suppose so. But, but this one can't. He's too little. Look, is there plenty of milk around here? Yes. Then that's it. I'll feed him warm milk until he's able to eat solid food. Now, now just a minute, just a minute. So is there a baby bottle around here? A baby bottle? Well, what do you want to... He can't drink milk like a dog or a cat. He needs a nursing bottle. <laughs> well, I don't think it's so funny. Is there one around here? Well, no, of course not. Any idea where I can get one? Well, uh, San Francisco. Oh, only there, huh? Well, what's the matter with that? I, I don't want to go into San Francisco. But why not? We can leave early in the morning and... Uh, Would you do me a favor? A favor? Well, I I suppose so. Well, the next time you go to the city, bring me back a baby bottle. But... but... Will you do it or not? Well, that's no way to ask anyone to do you a favor. Well, I'm not going to use it. It, It's for him. Oh. Well, in that case, all right. Thanks. Until I get the bottle, I'll feed him warm milk with a medicine dropper. That's right, baby. I'll have you up and around in no time. What's going on here? Oh, Carl, come in. What do you got there? You know Dick, don't you? Sure, I brought him out this afternoon. What's doing here? Uh, we found this seal pup. Found him? Let me see. He's blind. Hasn't got his eyes open. That's why we're bathing them. They'll have to be killed. Killed? What for? The herd deserted him. He wasn't fit to go along with him. He's a weakling. Not fit to live. Oh, only the physically fit should survive, huh? I thought I heard the last of that one. What do you mean by that? Nothing at all. I found the seal and I'll take care of him. Yeah? <laughs> all right, knock yourself out. It's none of my business. Bobby, you and me had a date in the city this afternoon. I've been looking for you. Oh, well, I, I forgot. We found the seal. We? And... Maybe you'd better get ready. But I... Go ahead. I can manage alone, all right. Sure, step on it, Bobby. <laughs> oh, all right. I'll get ready. I'll meet you at the boat. Don't forget the bottle. I won't. What are you talking about? What bottle? I asked you to pick up a baby bottle in San Francisco. Baby bottle? You nuts? It's for the seal. He can't eat solid food. Oh. What's the matter with you going in to get it? Nothing. I don't feel like going in the city. She said she'd do it, huh? That's right. She said she wouldn't mind. But maybe I might. You? Yeah, me. Maybe you and me better get something straight right now so we don't have any trouble later on. And why should we have any trouble later? Because I'm going to marry Bobby. Is that clear? Yeah, it's clear. But I can't see it's any... Great interest to me. So you're going to marry Bobby. What am I supposed to do? Just keep away from her, that's all. Now, look, you gave me some advice. I want to tell you something. Yeah, what? When I came here, I wanted this job because it got me away from people and stupid things like this discussion we just had. I don't want any part of them. 
All right. You marry Bobby or anybody you want. It's none of my business. Sure, but I was just telling exactly. you... Exactly. You just told me. So let's let it go at that. Now move over. I'm going to bathe his eyes again. <laughs> Baby, you mustn't wake Eddie. Oh, what makes you think I could sleep through all that racket? Gee, I'm, I'm sorry, Ed. Oh, look, Dick, I like you. You're a great guy. Sometimes you get funny spells. Still, I like you. But there is a limit. I told you I should have slept downstairs with oh, a... Oh, no, 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 it's all right. But for two weeks, we've been waking up every hour on the hour because the baby has got to have his bottle and his boric acid poultices. But I ask you... If the seal ever gets better, who's going to nurse us back to health? <laughs> I, I'm sorry, Ed, but i got to take care of Oscar. Oh, Oscar. Now you got a name for him now. Sure. It fits his personality, don't you think? Oh. Hand me the bottle, will you? Sure, sure. You want me to take it downstairs and warm it a little? No, thanks. This will be all right. Oh, that's good. That's good. You know something? I'm worried about Oscar. His eyes are better now. He can see, but it's about time he was taking solid food, isn't it? Me? I'm a bachelor. I don't know anything about babies and solid food. You know, I tried to give him a fish yesterday. He just smelled it and barked. You know, you're a funny guy. You come out here after being all through the Pacific to play wet nurse to a seal. I can't figure you out. Come on, now, Gip. What's troubling you? Well, you see, it when I got back, I... Well, I wanted to be alone, get away from people. I thought that would help. Help what? Oh, a lot of things. Oh, a gal, huh? Well, not only that, I... I was sick and tired of everything I'd seen. But, you know, I found out something. No matter what you do or say, you can't get away from yourself. That's why I've got to keep Oscar alive. He's given me something to be interested in again. Uh, does that sound silly? No. No, it ain't silly, Dick. But what are you going to do? Well, I guess all I can do is keep feeding him milk every hour. But I'll tell you what, Ed. I'll sleep downstairs when we're both off watch. That way we won't keep you awake. Oh, you? never mind that. But, you know... If my friends ask me why I'm looking so ragged, I'm going to sound pretty silly telling them I've been sitting up with a sick seal. Hmm, well, I don't know, Dick. Looks like you're going to lose him. Yeah, look at him. Thin as a rail, and he won't touch solid food. And if I ever saw a seal, it wouldn't touch fish. Look, Oscar. Look, Fish. See, all he does is smell it. He wants to eat it, but he can't. The person would think it was a kid, the way you worry about it. Well, it's almost that way with me. Oh, he's dying. I think he is, Dick. And only because he can't eat. Oh, Dick, I've got it. What? Oh, with a book you asked me to get in San Francisco on natural history. And look, there's a whole chapter in it about seals. Right here, see? Let me have it. That's a feeding habit. Bottom of his mouth. The membrane. Well, I'll be doggone. There's even a picture. Hey, Pop. What is it? Look, I'll show you. Here. Oscar, hold still, baby. Open your mouth. Now, look, just as the book says. Look, see this membrane holding his tongue down to his jaw? That's why he can't eat fish. He can't swallow. Well, I'll be a son of a gun. Well, what are you going to do about it? Do? Well, I cured his eyes, didn't I? Well, I'm going to operate. I'm going to cut that membrane. Oh, but, Dick, do you think you can? Well, it's got to be done or he'll die. He'll starve to death. It's got to be done now. Come on. Listening to Cornell Wilde as Dick Pearson in When Cupid Was a Pup on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. As the second part of our story opens, Dick Pearson has nursed a sealed pup back to health, only to learn that unless a membrane in the seal's mouth is cut, it will be unable to eat. Now Dick, Bobby, and Pop Larson are in the kitchen of the lighthouse getting ready to perform the operation. Now, we got everything? Mm-hmm. Knife, iodine, cotton. If this ain't the silliest thing, maybe we ought to wear white robes and masks. <laughs> oh, now, Pop. This isn't a laughing matter. I'm nervous. Well, I, I am too. Now, look, Oscar. This is going to hurt. But when it's all over, you'll be able to eat fish. Seals are <laughs> supposed to eat fish. Hey, Pop, hold down his flippers. Yeah, got him. Okay. And Bobby, try not to touch the knife with your fingers. Huh? All right. I'll get Oscar's mouth open. Now, hold it, baby. Now, we'll pop his mouth open with this block of wood. There. 
Now what's going on? Oh, hello, Carl. Here, sit down. What the devil are you doing? Now the knife. Hey, Bobby, we had a date. Oh, you'll have to wait, Carl. Here's the knife, Dick. Thanks. Now, here we go, Oscar. Hold him, Pop. I got him. Bobby, we got a date. Oh, just a minute, Carl. Uh, go ahead, Dick. Every time I got a date with you, you got one with that seal. Steady, Oscar. Steady. There. Iodine. Mm-hmm. There. Okay, Pop, let him go. I think the operation was a success, but we'll see. We'll try him with that fish. I'm going to. The darndest thing I ever heard of. What's the idea? Well, there was a membrane in Oscar's jaw. Held it down his tongue so he couldn't swallow. Hey, look. Look, he's smelling the fish. Oscar, take it. Go ahead. He ain't gonna do it. Oh, please, Oscar. You gotta. Come on. <laughs> he did. He ate the fish. Oh, Dick, I could hug you. Oh, try it, Bobby. <laughs> well, I... I guess I'll take Oscar down to the rocks for a walk. Yeah, that might be a good idea. Come on, Oscar. <coughs> now that you can eat, we'll go fishing. Well, Bobby, you going with me? I... Oh, all right, Carl. I'll be with you as soon as I change my clothes. I won't be long. Well, guess I'll be checking the light. Hey, Pop. Yeah? You better give that guy Pearson a little talk. Tell him to quit hanging around with Bobby. I warned him once, but it didn't stick. Carl, <laughs> Bobby's her own boss. So is Dick. As long as he does his work, I've got no complaint. Okay. I'm telling myself... The next time I'll make it stick. Yeah, but I'm telling both of you, this is nuts, just plain nuts. Oh, Ed, you don't know anything about yeah, it. But I've seen enough seals to know. Oscar's different. He's not just any seal. That's right. In the book, it says seals have to be taught to swim by their mothers. Well, all you need is flippers and the mother instinct. <laughs> You know, this cove is a good place. The water's quiet, not deep, just like a pool. Oscar is a crazy seal. First he couldn't see, then he couldn't eat. Now he can't swim. Maybe he ain't even a seal. Ah, uh, shut up, Eddie, will you? Hey, Oscar. <coughs> <laughs> now, look, baby. This is water. Now, go on in. Oh, fine. Now you have to tell him what water is. Gosh, he's afraid of it. Well, he oughtn't to be. You had him in a bathtub enough times. Now, look, Oscar. You're going in that water. One way or another, you're going in that water and swim. We hope. Give me the book, Bobby. Oh, here. Let's see. The book says he has to be taught to keep his nose closed underwater. Eh, maybe I should teach him to read first. Oh, sure. Yeah, that's all we need is a seal that reads. What's next? Oscar, you brought this on yourself. I'm going to push you in and teach you what every seal should know. Here you go. Hey, he sank like a rock. Why, he, he didn't swim a stroke. He's just laying at the bottom. The Gosh, dope. he'll drown. Well, he will if he stays there. Oh, Dick, he's got to be pulled out. I know. Here goes. Hey, grab him and hand him out to me, Dick. Okay. Eddie, you take him, quick. All right. Hey, I got him. Hey, give me a hand, too, huh? Oh, oh there. Oh. You. Oscar, you dumb clock. Oh, oh. You're going to swim if I have to move your flippers for you. Oh, this I can't watch. A seal that sinks like a rock. Oh, oh I'll see you later. Pat Dick, what are you going to do? Do? The only thing left. Look, the water's not deep. I'll stand in close to the rocks and hold Oscar up until he gets the idea. Oh, you can't do it alone. Well, why not? Come on. Oh, wait, wait. I'll help. Well, okay, if you want to. Now, Oscar, you're going to swim if it drowns you and me. He's learned to keep his nose closed underwater. Yeah, and he's using his flippers. That a boy, Oscar. <laughs> Look at him. He loves it. <laughs> Why, Dick, you're laughing. Laughing? Well, what's the matter with that? Well, I... You never laughed much. Well, there wasn't anything to laugh about. Wasn't there? Were things that bad? Now, look, Bobby, we get along swell as long as we have Oscar to think about. Let's not talk about me. Well, why not? You know, sometimes I think you need help as much as Oscar. Mm, yeah, I... I guess I do. I certainly needed Oscar to make me see a lot of things. That being alone and getting away from things doesn't help. And, well... What were you going to say? Yeah, what were you going to say? Why, Carl, I, I thought you were going to San Francisco. I didn't. Come on, get out of that water. Oh, now, you listen to Come me. Come on. Hey, you better get back up to the house, huh? I will not. I don't like being ordered around. All right, suit yourself. Pearson? What? 
told you a couple of times to keep away from Bobby. Maybe he didn't hear right. Now, look, Carl, let's not go over all that again. Ever since you came here, you've been making a play for Bobby, and I don't like it any better now than I did at first. <gasps> that seal, I should have killed him right away. And it ain't too late. Oh, Carl, don't you dare you... I told you to keep out of this. Now, be reasonable, Carl. You're imagining things. <gasps> imagining? Well, you see if this is imagination. Oh, you crazy fool, you kicked off. That ain't all. Oh, Carl, you idiot. You you stupid fool. You shouldn't have done that, Carl. But I did. I've been aching for a chance to take a poke at you ever since you came here. Okay, I gave you a reason. Slug me. Come on. Now, look. Maybe I know how you feel. But don't try it again. I think you're yellow. Just to prove it, I'll do it again. Well, you... Oh, stop it. Carl, did it. You want to get up, Carl? You can try it again, but I wouldn't if I were you. Now, Bobby, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cause all this. Come on, Oscar. Well, what's eating on you, son? Now, Pop, I, I kind of made a mess of things since I've been here. Maybe I ought to clear out. Uh huh. Bobby told me what happened. I, I wouldn't have come between them for anything in the world. Dick, there was nothing between Bobby and Carl. He sort of took things for granted. Bobby didn't tell you she was in love with him, did she? Oh, no, but that's what I thought all sure, along. Sure, sure. But Bobby wasn't going to come right out and tell you different. There was nobody going to bathe your eyes in boric acid to make you see. You had them wide open. But there was something inside that was blind. Understand? Are you serious, Pop? Maybe you better ask Bobby. I saw her heading for the cove a couple of minutes back. Oh, Pop, you're wonderful. Thanks. Thanks a million. Oh. Hello, Bobby. Oh, hello. <laughs> that Oscar's good company, isn't he? Yes, huh? But I've got a hunch he'll leave me to join the herd. He's well again. He knows how to swim. Yep, he'll leave just like that. Okay, Oscar, I'm going to tell her. Tell me? Tell me what? Well, Bobby, I, I don't know whether I can pick just the right words. They may even sound a little stiff and awkward. Maybe because I swore once I'd never put myself in a spot where I'd say them again. And now? Why, well, I, I told you before that I, I needed Oscar, that he made me see something. Oh? That's right, uh... Well, Bobby, nobody had to bathe my eyes in boric acid so I could see again. I didn't need that kind of help, but there was something I well, I did need, and I, I didn't know it. What are you trying to say, Dick? Well, I'm trying to say that I needed you. I, I thought I wanted peace and quiet, that I wanted to be alone. Well, didn't Oscar help? Well, in, in a way, yes. He was the one who, who brought us together. Made me realize that I needed someone as much as he did. Do I make sense, Bobby? Well... You're not supposed to answer, Oscar. She is. Well, do you really think I can take Oscar's place? Well, if you try real hard. I'll do my best. <laughs> well, you're not supposed to laugh after you kiss a girl. Yeah, but look, we had a, a seal pup playing Cupid for us. <gasps> oh, Dick, he, he's jumped in. Oscar, Oscar. <gasps> Why, he's going away. Oh, to join the herd. You know, it seems Oscar knows what he wants, too. <laughs> Mission accomplished, says Oscar. And he'll be back next year. You want to wait for him? Uh-huh. With you. Do you want me to tell you I love you? Oh, it might be nice. All right. Bobby, I love you. I know Oscar wouldn't be jealous if he heard me say it. Turn to our cavalcade microphone in a moment. Now, here is Gain Whitman. Just how good were the good old days? Not everything about them was good. If you had to buy food for your family in the old-time cluttered general store, for instance, you'd be horrified. Almost no food products were wrapped or packaged. In the daytime, the village loafers parked their muddy boots on the flour barrel, which the rats and mice used at night as a playground. The proprietor's cat slept in the open sugar barrel. 
If Mrs. Jones decided she didn't want soda crackers after handling them, they went right back into the box. Flies swarmed everywhere. The store was a gathering place for every germ in the neighborhood. People didn't know much about germs then. Today, all of us know that unwrapped, unprotected foodstuffs are dangerous. More and more, products in more and more stores come to you in modern, protected packages. And now that the war is over, more and more are wrapped in DuPont cellophane. Sparkling, transparent cellophane lets you see food products, and because it keeps them better, it saves money for you and for your grocer. But it should not be forgotten that DuPont cellophane as a package for the foods you buy is doing another vitally important job. It is protecting your bread, your cake, your cheese. It is safeguarding your candy, your toothbrush, your baby's underwear against contamination. DuPont cellophane is a wall in the path of disease germs. It keeps germs out. As a matter of fact, doctors, surgeons sometimes use it for that purpose, adding a layer of cellophane to the surgical dressing over a wound. Yes, indeed. Our good new days are better than the good old days. We're healthier. We live longer. We use individual paper towels instead of one towel for all comers. We use paper drinking cups instead of one tin cup or dipper for the whole family. The same increasing knowledge of the importance of hygiene is one of the reasons for the ever-growing number of products wrapped in cellophane. Cellophane that shows what it protects. One of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. And now, once again, our star, Cornell Wilde. Thank you. And thank you, Gain. Oh, by the way, uh, doing anything next Monday night? Next Monday night? I don't think so. Why? Then here's an invitation for you to listen to Circus Day on Cavalcade. Circus Day? With uh, seals? <laughs> and all the trimmings. Pink lemonade, popcorn, cotton candy, hot dogs, and the greatest array of talent ever assembled. Well, that's a big order. Well, yes. But we fill it with Academy Award winner Anne Revere and the fine young actor Ted Donaldson. Well, that's good enough for anybody. I'll take a ticket for the big top right here. <laughs> You're in. And thanks for your fine performance tonight. Well, this was my first appearance on Cavalcade, and it was a pleasure. Thanks and good night. Cornell Wilde appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox and will be seen in their production, Centennial Summer. Music for tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. The Cavalcade play was written by Bernard Fines and Harold Franklin. It was based on an original story by Richard English, published in the Saturday Evening Post. In tonight's cast with Cornell Wilde were Sammy Hill as Bobby, Griff Barnett as Pop, Elliot Lewis as Carl, and Jerry Hausner as Ed. This is Tom Collins inviting you to listen next week to Circus Day, starring Anne Revere and Ted Donaldson on the Cavalcade of America. Brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.